Hello and welcome to a constructed video on MTG Arena. As usual, I can't seem to quit God Pharaoh's Gift. This card is too much fun, so I'm going to keep playing with it. What's different about today's deck, though, is I'm not playing white. Uh, I've been playing God Pharaoh's Gifts, for, Gifts decks for quite a while now, and the common feature in all of them was always Angel of Invention, because that card's so good to eternalize with the gift. The difference here, though, is that this really isn't a dedicated gift deck so much. Like, sure, I've got Minister of Inquiries and Champion of Wits and cards that mostly exist to enable that strategy, but in reality, this is just a kind of good Sultai midrange deck. We've got a bunch of good explore creatures like Branch Walker, random value creatures like Hostage Taker can be card advantage, Thrashing Brontodon handles any random threats, and then powerful green 5-drops at the top end. The thing is that unlike a normal Sultai midrange deck, we have a potentially unbeatable late game once we start enabling Gate to the Afterlife and Godfarer's Gift. So this deck looked really sweet to me. It's not going to turn the gift on as reliably as the Esper version that I played last week, but it is going to have much better draws when you can't get this going. So I guess if people are expecting gift and they're going to play abrades and things like that, then this is more the deck where I want to be. The rest of the deck seems pretty straightforward, so I'll just go ahead and hop into it. Alright, match one, starting against Rogue Links. I haven't actually played much with this deck yet, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. This hand looks fine. Gate will eventually be good. Glintness Crane hopefully to find us like a walking ballista or something. Acceleration and a good reactive card. So yeah, this seems like exactly what we want. We can even turn one Botanical Sanctum. Uh, yeah, do this one. Play the Llanowar Elves, and then even though the Centerland Harbor will enter tapped, I can still get my Glint Nest down on turn two. Ooh, my opponent's playing red. We're going to see why people play this version of the deck. Glint Nest Crane is awesome against red. Go ahead and take my one here. Yep. I suppose I'll do this first, it doesn't matter. Now, oh, that is unfortunate, but the thing about this matchup is even when this card whiffs, and it's going to some percentage of the time, we only have 10 artifacts, which is not really an, er, I suppose I have 12, um, which is less than you're supposed to. I should have two more Verdurous Gearhawks, but 12 is not really, 12 or 14 is not really enough to make this reliable, and so either way, you're basically just saying I'm fine with the 1-3 bird. So, here, I think, might just go ahead and hostage taker this. I don't really have a lot of better plays. This might be hasty on this. Maybe I'm supposed to be looking for a better threat, but. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's fine by me. I'm probably, yeah, what I'm going to do here... So I'll go ahead and cast this Beaumont Courier, get this into play tapped, and get down my gate to the afterlife. And I'm not going to attack, because my attacks aren't really good. I think I'm in an okay spot here. Like, I suppose if my opponent just starts playing their unbeatable 4-drops, like if it's rekindling Phoenix into Phoenix into Hazaret, then I'll probably die, but uh, I can beat just that, at least for now. <clears throat> okay, sweet. I will play this Minister of Inquiries. I suppose I shouldn't have done that first, but the odds of me doing anything else are very low. And I think I am going to tick up here. Dig for something fun to do. And I'll get a Merfolk Matchwalker. Again, um, I suppose now actually I can attack with this. My opponent can't block with Hazaret, and this isn't a good block here. So, not an incredible shape here, but this could be winnable. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked because this was holding Pia and Nalar back. Yeah, I think that might have been bad. My opponent attacks with Pia here. Vivian's going to take extra damage for no real reason. Whatever they do, I'm just chumping here, and the rest of the damage can hit Vivian, that's fine. 
Okay. Go ahead and block Hazard at the Fervent. Uh, yeah, this looks fine. Now we're getting started. Uh, go ahead and loot because there's no reason why not. Okay. Hmm. So I think my strategy this turn is I need as I want to be able to activate this gate. So go ahead and ditch Merfolk Branchwalker. For now I have two creatures in the graveyard. It's going to be tough to get uh, enough, but I think we're going to be able to do it. My newest friend. Uh, go ahead and get Walking Ballista. Then hmm, play this for zero. Or I suppose I should have activated this first. Yeah. Uh, cancel. Or, hmm. I don't actually know if I can go back from here. Oh, this was a mistake. Oh well. That's fine. Get my loot. Go ahead and discard... Hostage Taker, sure. Activate this, targeting myself. Did not hit another creature, so we are... But we are up to five. Which, hopefully, will be enough? Huh. I suppose it's actually better to Ipnu Rivulet targeting myself. So... Target a player. Uh, submit. Come on, hit one creature. Yeah, we did it. Uh, library... Godfair's Gift. Sweet! There's not really anything else I can do in my pre-combat, so I can go to combat. Here, uh, I think my best bet is to Hostage Taker. And I'm probably going to hit the Phoenix. This card's really annoying. I can ch keep chump blocking Hazaret, but... And no attacks. Okay. That turn was a little slow for my liking, but I think we navigated it correctly enough. And this is perfect. I get to chump block Hazaret. I don't know if they pump all the damage in here. Vivian takes a little. But yeah, opponent had seen enough because this was going to run away with the games, and I was even going to recast their Phoenix. So yeah, uh, I was a little worried about the red matchup without Angel of Invention, but it seems like it's fine. Alright, hopping into match two against the Sly Spy. Yeah, I was really impressed that last game. I thought we were in a lot of trouble, and the deck just fired up and kept going, and it was, it was great. Sand looks fine. This is like... These hands are why you play this version of the deck instead of the Esper. Because if this were the Esper deck, this hand would be terrible. But because of the version I'm playing, I'm fine with just casting a m bunch of Merfolk Branchwalkers and getting around to the other stuff eventually. I'm playing red-green. Um, maybe unhappy to be on this version of the deck if they are playing like a dinosaur type thing, but who knows. And get in for some damage. Uh, I'm going to keep that on top. Like the idea of this, I really do want to find a gate at some point. I've got two rivulets so I can mill myself a lot to turn the gate on. Opponent not doing anything, which is super weird. Okay, I'm just going to keep playing creatures. Take the action, yes. Perfect. Uh, let's discard... I think I want to ditch the Brontodon and the Ballista. I want to have this available in case my opponent plays like just some big dinosaur. I want to be able to get rid of it. And then I want this to set up this. And now we're at three creatures in the yard, so not that far off from activating the gate. Okay.
I'm expecting like a Ripjaw Raptor or something here. Okay, uh, again, nothing. That's super weird to me, but... Okay, go to combat. Attack with these guys. Okay, Sapperlings. I did not expect that. Alright, go ahead, block. I almost feel better now, because I think Sapperlings... Oh, this is funny, though. I wasn't expecting this. I'm getting super punished for not playing this pre-combat. I could have gotten a bunch of loots and stuff, but... Oh well. Okay, go through with the damage. Well... I'm gonna go ahead and play this. <laughs> uh, for now, I think I'm just going to pass the turn. We have five creatures in the yard. If I activate Minister, the odds are pretty good that I'll be able to activate Gate on their end step and then have all my mana available. We'll see what happens, though. This is one of those games where what I'm doing is very obvious, so my opponent knows how to play, but they didn't give away much information, and so I'm playing suboptimally. And... People often underestimate that in magic. Okay, big dragon. I'm glad that I have a hostage taker lying around. Let's see if they exert it. None of these creatures are very valuable. Exerting isn't great. Okay. Yep, take the action. I will ditch this forest. This is especially weird because uh, I didn't even really need to do this. They killed my creature, so I had enough, but. Library, grab Godfather's Gift. Like, my opponent's really close to dying here. So, let's see. What do we have in our yard? What are we going to be eternalizing? Ugh, probably just a Branch Walker? I mean, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, I think that's my best option. Go to combat. Nah, I'll just get a champion of wits. Strong cards isn't bad. I lose that on one damage, but I'm up a bunch of cards. Like, that just seems great. Ditch. Blooming Marsh and an Island. This is great. Go to combat. To attack for five. Put them to two. Or three. This isn't untapping. And we get to Island... This for colorless litness crane. Sweet. And then. Hmm. I kind of don't want to play this because if they have a removal spell, they'll get their glory bringer like back. So I think I'm actually just going to play another crane. Uh, sure. I think we've got this one pretty locked up. I'm going to... Hell, if I draw land, I could just cast the other god for his gift and eternalize a bunch more stuff and beat them down with it. Getting them to three actually relevant here because I have three one-power attackers, so even if they had somehow a blocker for all my four fours, these would be lethal. Also could randomly get a damage if I eternalize a walking ballista. It doesn't come on with any counters, but I can activate it to put a counter on it, and then shoot them for one. Opponent gives the good games, I will return the favor. See if they keep playing it out. It won't last that long either way. Pirate's Pillage. Okay. This card is interesting, because... Like, on its face, it's kind of just worse than Tormenting Voice. It costs two more mana and then refunds it, but that means you can't do it until turn four, which is really bad. But I wonder if there is some application with it sort of being a ritual for next turn and giving you those treasure. Anyway, I'll be back with game three. Okay, getting into... This is actually match four. Match three, my opponent uh, very aggressively went to time every single time they got priority. 
And that was really obnoxious and awful content, so I'm going to spare the world ever seeing that happening again. It was bad enough that I lived through it. No one else should have to sit through it. This is a really sweet hand. Champion of Wits can clean things up and get something going here. Hostage Shaker is just an excellent card to power out, and we had our acceleration. Uh, this is not a super fantastic hand against Mono Red, but maybe this will find a Glintness Crane or something like that. Don't have any double black cards, so I can go ahead and play these out, and I'll play the Swamp later. Hmm. It's possible that I evaluated what I was going to do a little too quickly. I maybe should have just played the Brontodon, just get a 3-4 down, it would have made it hard for my opponent to attack. If my opponent attacks, I will trade. Don't need them drawing a bunch of cards later. Uh, eventually, something like this is going to happen. These first few turns are also really important. Okay. Sure. I was going to say because they tell us what version of the of the red deck my opponent is playing. Because, for instance, well, they all play Beaumont Courier, so that doesn't tell you anything. But if instead of Cut to Ribbons, my opponent had played multiple uh, Gitu Lava Runners, then I know they're the very low-to-the-ground uh, version. This was an excellent draw. I really didn't want to play a Hostage Taker into an empty board. Okay. Well. Three mana for a 2-1 that draws two cards is fine by me. We're a long way from eternalizing this, but it's a lot easier when you just pick up two extra lands. We have a few creatures in the yard. We're going to need a lot more to activate a gate. See what Chandra does here. Unfortunately, this only gets creatures or artifacts, so Chandra is... Okay. Walking Ballista. Okay. A little too much to hope for, but... Um, go ahead and tap this. Not like a fool. I'll go ahead and play that. The fact that they, like, fixed the auto-tapping, but it still won't aggressively tap these for colorless is so infuriating to me. Yep, take the action. Sweet, this is great. I will... Hmm. I don't have anything else to do with my mana this turn. As I said, we're up to four cards in the yard. I could ditch these to try to get this going as quickly as possible. That's really aggressive, though. I suppose that also means I have lands 6 and 7 to activate Champion of Wits. This might be wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, hopefully my opponent's scared, because, oh my god, what must be in his hand if he just ditched two Hostage Takers? I need them to tap low here, so I get to play and crack the gate without being threatened by a Braid. Just exile a land, that's fine. Okay, so they are playing like a low-to-the-ground pirates build. They just got kind of an awkward draw, I guess. Interesting. Okay, they don't have mana for a braid. I think I'm in really good shape here. Oh, well that's a sweet draw too. But, go ahead, play this. And I suppose I hadn't revealed that this is what I was doing yet, so that's cool. They probably could have guessed just from the type of creatures I was playing, but... And this is awesome, because this Heart of Kiran actually would protect, uh, I wouldn't play my land, because why not, would protect Chandra, but it is not going to, because Hostage Taker can exile artifacts, I'm going to be able to eternalize a Hostage Taker, get rid of this heart. Uh, get rid of Heart of Kiran. Then attack both creatures, unless they have a shock. A shock would protect Chandra here, but they're still not in good shape if that's their last card. I 
This card is really fun. <laughs> now I think I'm in very good shape. Even if they somehow get rid of the God Pharaoh's gift, next turn I would be able to uh, play their Heart of Kiran and a Vergerous Gear Hulk and just have an absolutely monstrous board. And like, even if they somehow deal with Hostage Taker and with God Pharaoh's Gift, starting next turn I can either Vergerous Gear Hulk and then start Eternalizing Champion of Wits every turn. I think I'm in a very good spot. Okay, another Chandra is a good card. Probably gonna flame slash this to get their heart back. This guy's gonna shrink though, so I can just with my gift I can get my other hostage taker and get rid of Heart of Kiran again. So this victory is short lived for my opponent. Hmm. And I think I still am going to. Okay, it's fine. Hmm. What else do I want to do with my turn? I don't think anything. Thing. Okay, let's go to combat. Get my other hostage taker. I can take their heart. He's a phantom thief, taking their heart. Uh, so now, go to combat, attack Chandra Torch of Defiance. Opponent can chump, they can't threaten anything here. Yeah, sure. Traded Ringing Runner for keeping Chandra around. Damage. Then, for colorless, colorless, get the heart down. Sweet. And then, do I want to play the Virgil Skierhulk? Hmm. This is interesting, because this uses my mana the best. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yep. Two and two seems fine. Now, my opponent is in really rough shape. This has Trample, so it is... Basically certain to kill Chandra next turn. My gift is still going, and I have... I can spend seven mana at a time to eternalize Champion of Wits. I think this one has to be about wrapped up. Okay, sure. Pray for something good. Okay, whatever. Sure. I'm glad that bending the two hostage shakers worked out. I was a little worried that they would, like, leave up a braid and I would never get to get value off my God Pharaoh's gift and then just get absolutely destroyed because of my decision, but... Resolves. I'm gonna go ahead and block. They'll, they might even activate before blocks. They just wanted to trade this for a random card. Yep. Sure. This card is not very good when you're losing on board very badly. Okay. So I am going to eternalize this. Yep, take action, because that's a lot of cards, and I love drawing lots of cards. Oh man, I can hard cast one of these next turn? That sounds sweet. Go ahead and bin Branchwalker and Glitness Crane. Play this. Oh man. It's not often that an 8th land Hinterland Harbor enters tapped. Combat. Get to do the thing. I, want, I guess I'll get Shade Light Ranger. That seems good. Uh, let's go ahead and bin that. Bin that. Why not? Attack. Send this at Chandra. You. You. 
Do I want to attack with everyone? I'm in no danger. There's no way I lose from here. Maybe I guess I should have left something back because I'm. it doesn't speed up the clock and I'm definitely going to win next turn anyway. But, like, I don't know. Ribbons is threatening four damage. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're still a million short. I, I think that attack was not correct, and I don't think that there's a way that I get punished for it. Okay. Go ahead and play this for style points. The fact that this card isn't legendary is just messed up. Okay, to minimize clicking, I'm just going to... I suppose I should have gotten the Llanowar Elves in that case. Ooh. This is sick. The fact that God Pharaoh's Gift doesn't target is also ridiculous. Uh, I suppose I just betrayed my own thing about not clicking it up as much. But this way I get to have so many 6-6s. Six <laughs> oh, man. This deck is really fun. God Pharaoh's Gift is just really fun to play with. Put my opponent to negative 33. Alright, I'm happy with how that game went. Getting into game five for the Chandra Mirror. <laughs> I wonder if there's any correlation at all between what avatar you pick and what decks people choose to play most. On the draw here. I don't think that matters too much. Uh, the deck really does like the extra card because you're so much less consistent at assembling the gift compared to the, the the Esper version, that maybe you need the extra card a little more? I'm not sure. At the same time, the other deck is better at... Ugh. This hand kind of sucks. Maybe I keep it anyway. It has an enabler that can hopefully smooth out this draw, a good top end just to cast, and to the gate that I'm looking for. This is close. On the draw, I think this hand just doesn't quite do enough. Oh man, I think this hand is like worse, but now I'm going to keep it. Ugh. Guess I keep like any third land. Yeah, this, this hand is in, tr is in trouble. <laughs> it needs help. Okay. Well, that is an excellent draw. Okay, sure. That's the turn. Can go ahead and get Brontodon down, and then I can play this and activate Brontodon to blow up the Heart of Kieran. They missed their third land, that would be pretty sweet for me. Okay. So, I'm going to take another hit off of this, but I think we're going to be fine. Hmm. I suppose it's actually better to just get... No, because this is just a good blocker. I'm just going to play this card. Uh, sure. I don't think there's a world in which... I suppose if they... No, if they have Unlicensed Disintegration, they're not attacking with a ground creature anyway, so this is just two free damage. Okay, they hit their land. Crew. But it's speeding through their turn. Yep. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, can't play that because it'll enter tapped. Uh-oh. Oh boy, I'm going to have to exit the client and I'll be right back. Oh man, so getting back into it, hopefully my cards work now. They do, we... Okay, play gate to the afterlife, and I'll go ahead and pass the turn from there. Oh, dang it, I'm in full control again. Um, okay, I thought it was funny that I hopped back in and I specifically commented on the Chandra avatar, but it looks like my opponent had a Jace avatar. So I guess my whole turn had been messed up already. 
It explains why my opponent's moving through phases and stuff so strangely if their deck is messed up. Or if my client is messed up, not their deck. Okay. Resolves. I can go ahead and get a free block of the Brontodon. Uh, actually, yeah, okay. This is good. Declare blocker. Blow up the Heart of Kirin. They have another Heart of Kirin. I'll look a little silly for bending over backwards to get this done, but that's fine. Yep, go ahead. Hmm. Go ahead and ditch the crane. I don't think the crane is great here. Really hoping that I don't have another heart. I would love to just get a Verdress Gearhawk down and win with my very big board. Only two creatures in the yard. That's not nearly enough yet, but... We're not in the worst shape ever. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, that would have been a good draw if I still had my gate to the afterlife. <laughs> Instead, it's pretty medium. I will go ahead and play... Hmm. Now, this is interesting. I could just play... No, I can't play this on three yet. Because it's a combo to get a walking ballista down and Verger's Gearhulk and dump a bunch of counters on this and just blow up their board. I'm getting low enough, though, that I think I just need to use my mana. Get... I have to get a good board this turn. I think I'm going to make this an X4. So it doesn't die to like a lightning strike or something like that. Could hit them, but I think I'm better off playing a little defensive for the moment. Okay. This is the danger in making this an X4. Oh, huh. Are they going to have another upgrade? No, they have a Heart of Kieran. Okay. Well. Hmm. Okay, well this was a good draw. Because we're nowhere near getting a Gate to the Afterlife online. But we are pretty close to just hard casting this card. So, I'm going to... This is pretty awkward. I think my best play... Is I'm going to have the Gear Hulk swing over here. They could block to kill this with like Heart plus Karizev. Yeah, that's probably what they're going to do. I doubt they would just chump, that's really weird. Okay, order it like this. Yep, sure. And actually, the card I'm most scared of right now is this Kariza. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this off the table. Uh, move. Shoot this for one. It's possible I'm supposed to leave this on the table um, because I'll be able to get the Gear Hulk and dump a bunch of counters on it next turn. But I think overall this way is better. These next couple turns, yeah, I was going to say, are still going to be really scary because... I'm going to take a lot of damage from whatever they decide to do, but I'm going to go ahead and block here. I can take five. See what they do here. Today's my lucky day. Okay, getting dangerously low, and this is when I wish I had an Angel of Invention. Okay, what is our best play? I think... Best play is to God Pharaoh's Gift, get back Gear Hulk, put two and two, then I can take out Chandra and leave a 7 6 blocker back. So this can even blunt Hazaret without uh, any problem. Next turn, I can Rivulet and mill myself to try to find better targets. I'm on a short clock just from Hazaret activating, and even shorter clock just from Hazaret activating. Oh, this sucks. Wow, god, this card is so nuts. Sometimes I forget that this card is absolutely ridiculous, but... Okay, so I'm going to Rivulet, mill myself, sacrifice the Rivulet, because that's my only desert. 
do what we hit. Uh, basically nothing. Oh boy. So, what I'm going to do is go to combat, get a glint nest crane. Found a gate to the afterlife. Cool. And I still don't think I can attack. I think I need this as a blocker. So, no attacks. Let's see. In the yard, we have one, two, three, four. Not close to enough. Gross. So, I think I will play Land War Elves, play Gate to the Afterlife. Oh, it's unfortunate that this only triggers on non tokens. So, if these die, I don't get to loot. Oh boy. I need something. <laughs> I, need, I don't know exactly what I need, but I need help. If I could get another Godfrey's gift online, I think I would win the game pretty quickly. That is. Whoa! That is an excellent draw. The question is which one I pick. Because I don't want this to just die and give them a Hazaret again. Hmm. So I think. Black, blue, colorless, colorless. I think I am actually going to take the... Oh, I need to win the game this turn, because they're going to end step, activate Hazaret, untap Hazaret. Unless, of course, I hostage taker Hazaret. Okay. So, I, I have changed my mind. Oh, and I can activate, or I can cast this this turn. I'm dumb. Wow, that's... Okay. Go ahead. Get a Merfolk Branchwalker. Let's see. If they block the 5 4, they take 4, 8, 14. Not enough. So. I will just go ahead and attack with these two. I don't know. I was completely missing the Llanowar Elves. I thought I wouldn't be able to recast Tazeret. But, okay. So, alright opponent, do you have it? You have one turn to deal two damage to me. Unlicensed doesn't do it. Yep, they needed exactly that. Oh, that's really brutal. But I suppose we had to lose eventually. Okay, getting into it. I think this will be the last game. There, there will be a few more games to finish it out, but I prefer to keep these videos a little shorter. Evil Archer goes first. Unlucky. Yeah, that, that last game uh, was close enough that I know my commentary starts getting a little flustered. Ugh. I think this hand's even okay, but it really needs to find a blue. We have a lot of blue sources in the deck, though. So, this could go wrong, but I'll keep it. But yeah, that last game was close enough that I was getting excited and flustered. And ugh, I'll try to keep it together a little better. Well, that's just dandy. Take a little damage off of it, but I will not complain. One of the interesting things is, like, the the version with Stitcher's Supplier is so much better at enabling itself that they play, like, one Ipnu Rivulet, but this game, or this deck, plays a whole lot. So, I think I'm just going to play this and pass. I suppose there's some argument to, like, getting in for damage. Because I don't have the gate yet. Uh, go ahead and bin that. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and fill up my graveyard and then we can get around to attacking later. This is a good start. We're going to play a lot of good creatures. Okay, opponent playing green white. Well, this will tell us exactly what's going on. Maybe cats or horses or something? Angel, okay. Oh yeah, I've seen this. People have played like a green-white angels deck. Uh, if it's really a problem, I can just blow this up with my Brontodon. Oh, that wasn't a great mill. Man, I was like, oh, we only have two Blooming Marshes, but now these are both going to enter That kind of sucks. So... I think I'm actually just going to play this first. Alright. That is great. Hmm. 
so now I know that I don't want to attack with the minister because the minister is going to be doing vital work milling ourselves. It's possible I wasn't supposed to ditch the blooming marsh. I should get rid of one of these instead. I don't know though. Cause like I, I don't need a fifth land. Next turn I'm going to be playing this tapped and playing this. Okay, Shalai. That's a big creature, but that's fine. Okay, one, two, three, four. That is not even close to enough. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> hmm. Still, though, I can attack with these, and if they block, it will enable this, because it'll put one in the graveyard from the creature dying, and then another one from the loot that I get off of Gate to the Afterlife. Oh, I should have attacked with Minister, too. It's not doing anything here. Ugh. Hmm. I guess I have to go ahead and get rid of card. I haven't played this quite right. Like, it's not awful, but this could have been better. Ugh, a Lyra Dawnbringer here would be really rough. Oh, that's much worse. Wow, main deck Forsake the Worldly, huh? Okay, yeah, I'm getting blown out here. That sucks. <laughs> I guess I'm glad I hung on to this. Huh. Okay, so what I can do here, go ahead, hit for one. Then green, green, colorless, and play the Brontodon. Instead of the Forsake, I'm probably going to be hitting the Seal away. So, go ahead and end my turn. I'm down to one card, and it's not very good, so that's good for us. Oh, they hit, uh... Oh, I should have responded, since I'm going to do this anyway. I could have denied, uh, the City's Blessing for this turn, so I just gave them Vigilance for free. That was a mistake. Maybe going to cost us? We'll see. A lot of things could happen, like in the next couple turns. If I find another Gate to the Afterlife, then I think we'll be in very good shape. Or, yeah, that one. I already have the gift. And we get a lot of looks. Yep, take action. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bid this gift, and this Walking Ballista. What I might be looking to Field of Ruin me. On my on their end step. Okay, so we've got plenty of creatures in here now. We just need to find another gate. Colorless, colorless, blue. Yep. You dig? Oh, this is a good hit. Um. So, I think I'm going to get rid of the 6th land that I don't really need, and the Champion of Wits. So that I can go ahead and play this this turn. If my opponent doesn't draw anything for a couple turns, we'll be in just very good shape. I just get to Hostage Taker and take their Angel. Uh, I guess I keep that on top just so I have another try, even if they manage to get rid of my Hostage Taker. Or if they do draw another good angel, I'm not just dead. Since I'll get to get rid of both. Okay. That's an interesting decision, to get in one more point of damage when they know that I'm drawing this card. Like, this card does not have hexproof. <laughs> it gives them and their other creatures hexproof, but... Um, uh, I'm gonna leave one back, I, just in case something weird happens. I'm getting kind of low, and I don't think the extra two damage on them is what's going to make the difference. Okay. 
At least one of their draws was a blank, and they didn't hit anything else. Kind of unlucky for them that they didn't hit more than one angel in their green-white angels deck, but I guess I'll take it. So, uh, let's see what we got. Cast out. Sure. Yeah, so that was six games. You only saw five of them, but I thought they were all pretty interesting and interactive, so I'll call it for that one. I like the deck, and I'll talk to you next time.